Okay, so welcome back to day two of many. And um, our first talk will be Sahana Vasudevan, and she will tell us about triangulated surfaces in modulized space. Um, thanks for the introduction. And uh, yeah, also feel free to interrupt me with questions. Um, so let me start by explaining the title. So modulized space is there is modulized space with not so different. Um, but let me explain what is a triangulated surface. So um, uh, basically, we uh, consider unit equilateral triangles and um, glue them to form a, a GMSG compact surface, and everything is oriented and also connected. And uh, we automatically get a complex structure um, on the surface because we can view each equilateral triangle as embedded in the complex plane. And the gluing preserves the structure uh, over the edges, and then it extends to the vertices, the triangulation, which are a discrete set of points. So in this way, we get a Riemann surface. And um, we'll consider, uh, so triangulated surface is basically surface constructed in this way, and we'll construct, consider um, surfaces of genus at least two. Um, in this situation, it's equivalent to talk about Riemann surfaces and hyperbolic surfaces. Um, in particular, any Riemann surface has a unique conformal hyperbolic metric. And uh, we're interested in the following question. So as uh, the genus tends to infinity and the number of triangles, T, um, also tends to infinity proportionally to G, um, then, uh, and you kind of sample a triangulated surface with T triangles of genus G, um, what are the, and you look at the hyperbolic metric on it, what are the geometric properties of this? So for instance, what is the expected diameter? Um, and this question, or the answer to this question will lead to the next question, which is um, where are uh, the triangulation surfaces distributed in moduli space of Riemann surfaces? Okay. Um, yeah, and before moving on to the next slide, I just want to uh, say something about uh, motivation. So um, in geometry, uh, it's natural to study triangulations, but this kind of appears in some other context as well. So um, the probability people study various um, random models of triangulations, and this one is actually something that is relevant also. and um, I'll maybe say more about that later in the talk. And finally, from the number theory perspective, uh, these surfaces obtained this way are exactly the Riemann surfaces that are defined over Q bar, uh, the algebraic numbers. Um, so if instead of triangulations, you want to think about um, Bailey maps or like the um, combinatorial data associated to Bailey maps, uh, you can just do that for the rest of the talk and replace uh, see the number of triangles by the degree of the Bailey map. Okay. So um, Brooks and Macover uh, actually studied the question I talked about. So you sample a, a random triangulated surface, you look at the hyperbolic metric on it, and you ask, um, what are what does it look like? Um, and uh, they studied this basically in the range where T is proportional to 40. So one thing to note is that if you just decide to glue some T number of triangles together and uh, condition that you get a connected compact surface, then your genus is expected genus is going to be around T over four. So in this situation, basically the way to imagine the surface is that there are very few vertices in the triangulation. Like say you can think of maybe around log G vertices and uh, with very high degree. Okay, so um, you take the hyperbolic metric on it and you ask uh, questions like what is the expected length of the uh, shortest geodesic or shortest um, non null boom to be curved? Uh, what is the diameter? What is the Cheeger constant, which sort of measures, roughly speaking, how difficult it is to cut the surface into two pieces of roughly equal area? And what is the first eigenvalue of Laplace? And uh, so basically, they showed that there exists constants 
um, such that these, uh, yeah, probabilities are 10 to 1, basically. Um, yeah. how, how do you define random in this setting? How do I define what? Random. Uh, Random. Oh, random? Yes. Oh, random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, for a fixed T and G, uh, there are a finite number of surfaces. Mm -hmm. I just pick one uniformly. But do you do something with automorphism or automorphism? In that oh, it's just uh, up to like combinatorial isomorphism. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like isomorphism of triangulations. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, maybe let me say a little bit about the. Uh, proof. Um, just the proof is mostly kind of combinatorial. So I mean, tri triangulations are dual to trivalent graphs. So you can sort of um, make all of these into statements involving trivalent graphs and do the relevant combinatorics. So you said this is referring to the hyperbolic metric or the hyperbolic metric. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, the uh, in this situation, the hyperbolic metric can be seen very mostly like can be seen very easily from the flat metric because there are, uh, there are very few vertices with very high degree. So you can just write down what is the hyperbolic metric uh, approximately. Yeah, which also makes it easier to study the uh, properties. Okay. Um, so instead of uh, surfaces coming from triangulated surfaces. So um, basically, we look at moduli space mg, which parameterizes g to g hyperbolic surfaces. Um, and uh, basically, if you don't think about moduli space, you can just think of it as where points are, are g to g Riemann surfaces. Um, and it has some nice topology, and it has some complex structure also. Um, yeah. and on, on moduli space, there's this natural uh, measure called Ray Peterson measure, which uh, I, you don't need to know, so I won't explain what it is. Um, but it's some natural measure on mod moduli space. And according to this, you can pick a random hyperbolic surface and ask the same questions that you asked before. So, what is the expected uh, systole or shortest geodesic? What is the expected diameter? What is the Jigar constant? Yeah, I can have a little question. And the point is that. Um, you get almost the same answers as before. So Mirtakani studied this. Um, and uh, yeah, so you get almost the same answers before. Of course, the constants are different. But like if you look at it non-sharp way, it's kind of the same answer as before. But except for the first one, um, so shortest geodesic. And that happens because uh, in moduli space, there's you can divide moduli space into what is called like thick part and thin part. And the thin part of moduli space is um, consists of uh, hyperbolic surfaces with a very short geodesic. And it just turns out that this actually has a positive A Peterson volume as you tend to infinity, as the genus tends to infinity. Okay, so uh, as a result, we uh, ask the following question, which is how are triangulated surfaces distributed in um, mg as g tends to infinity quantitatively? Um, so let's make that more precise. We want to choose a metric and then look at a unit ball in that metric um, and then see how many triangulations uh, end up in this ball. And here, when I count triangulations, like if two triangulations map to the same Riemann surface, they're counted twice. Okay, so the metric we will choose is the type polar metric. And um, here's a way to think about the type polar metric that is sufficient in this context. Uh, you just look at two hyperbolic surfaces uh, to tell the distance between them. Uh, you just look at the smallest L by Lipschitz map between them. Um, L by Lipschitz means distances are increased slash decreased by at most a factor of L um, with respect to the respective hyperbolic metrics. And yeah, uh, you just take log so that it's actually a metric. And this is a really horrible metric, but it's easy to kind of visualize, I guess. And it's equivalent to the type. Um, so basically, the question we will answer now is, uh, with respect to this metric, if I look at a unit ball in MG, how many triangulated surfaces um, lie in it as a function of T and G? Oh. Okay, yeah. 
Um, does anyone know what time did I start? Uh, 10 minutes ago. Oh, 10 minutes ago? Oh, okay, great. Um, so, yeah. So here are, here's the answer. Um, so I guess uh, if you have time only to read one, uh, you should read the upper bound because that is part of the proof. Um, the lower bound is not very surprising. So the point is that there are at most uh, exponential in T, number of T triangle triangulated surfaces in a titular unit ball in moduli space of genus G. And this C is a constant like a thousand. So it doesn't depend on T or G. Yeah. And then there's also a lower bound, which tells you like if I have a you know, ball in moduli space, can I find a triangulated surface in it? Uh, yeah, in the thick part of moduli space. Okay, uh, any questions up to this point? Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, just going back to the slide once. So earlier I was talking about uh, what do things look like as G tends to infinity, but these statements, they're not, I'm not taking G tending to infinity. They're just true for all G and T. But now I will explain what does this mean as G tends to infinity. Um, so module as space um, can be covered by around G to the 2G titular unit ball. That is the thick part of module space. Um, and this is proved by Fletcher, Kahn, and Markovich. And then the number of, of P triangle triangulated surfaces of genus G is around G to the 2G times C to the T. Um, it was proved like a few years ago by Butsinski and Wu. And uh, actually, this is just a, it, it's a counting problem, basically, but it's very hard. Um, and it, it is proved using probabilistic methods. Uh, yeah. Um, so now the point is that if you expect some sort of well distribution, you would want each ball to contain around C to the T triangulations, which is what we prove. Is it the same constant C? Oh, which no, no, no. All the constants C are different. And also, even uh, in Butsinski and Lu's result, they get the constant, um, but the, the next term, like there's a multiplicative exponential error after that, just after the constant term, I mean, C to the, yeah. So they get like, if you think about it, it's um, like E to the alpha T where alpha is known, but then plus uh, some error term, yeah. And in my situation, I don't get the exponent. So the error term is slightly worse. Uh, Okay, so uh, let me explain the main obstruction to proving uh, any sort of upper bound. Uh, even now, if you give me two particular triangulations and you ask me, are these close in moduli space? Uh, then I don't know the answer. Um, so this is similar to maybe asking if you have uh, like maybe a uh, descent alphonse or like combinatorial uh, data associated to Bailey map, uh, then can you tell if the underlying three month surface is the same? Um, uh, and that's in general kind of hard. But despite that, uh, like one can get upper bounds. And in the range where he tends to infinity, these upper bounds are actually quite reasonable. If you give two triangulated surface, is it easy to, to see they are the same or not as triangulated surface? Uh, I guess that depends on how you give me the information, yes. but yeah, I mean, I'm, you give I, you give me the information so that that's clear. So ah, if I give you a number of triangles and tell or to glue them, then it's easy to see if two such things are. are I, one of I think uh, I think it should be. Yeah, but I mean, in my case, I'm just given like isomorphism classes of triangulation. So yes, but, you have to use somewhere to. That is random, so. Oh, uh, no, I mean, if I, if my um, set is isomorphism classes yes. of triangulations, then that's a discrete mm -hmm. 
uh, I mean, that's a finite no, no. set. So, the so definition, yeah. I agree, but to you, is it? Oh, I see. Yes, I see what you mean. So, I don't know for certain, but I would, if I had to guess, I would guess yes, that is relatively easy to do. But uh, it depends also, maybe it's not because there's a, there might be a mapping class group issue. Uh, ah. uh, so, maybe, like, I'm sure some version of the statement is true, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, I guess instead of talking about the proof, let me move on to uh, more questions. Uh, so um, throughout, I was talking about a situation where G tends to infinity and uh, T also tends to infinity. Um, but there is actually a very interesting question that arises if you look at a fixed genus and you look at the T triangulated surfaces as T tends to infinity and um, it's a kind of well-known open problem. And um, so, yeah, so, so each, um, for, for each T, you can get like a discrete set of points and that will give you some measure. Um, and you can normalize the measure and see if uh, these measures converge. Um, uh, and even just like whether there's a limit is totally unknown, uh, but there are conjecture. There are conjectures on what is the limit. There are measures on different sets. No, uh, G is fixed here. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. So G is fixed. You take the number of triangles to infinity. Yeah. And uh, very, yeah. So, so even if, um, even like trying to prove if there's a limit is unknown. Um, but actually, there are conjectural descriptions of the limit uh, coming from probability uh, and mathematical physics. Yeah, and also maybe I should say that really here, what is causing problems is uh, when triangulations have like locally positive curvature. So you can think about like, uh, you know, degree of a triangulation. And if the degree is um, less than six, it's like positive curvature. And degree six is looks flat and uh, degree greater than six, um, it looks like negative curvature. And in fact, if you just get rid of this, then it's pretty clear that there's a limit. But as long as, as, long as you allow this, you have a problem. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I think I'll end here. <laughs> Questions? Well, for the first question, what is the expected limiting measure? Sorry? For, the, for that first question, what is the expected limiting measure? Oh, uh, I don't know. They like probabilists have very complicated descriptions that I don't understand. I was confused with the relation with Bailey map because if you have a covering, you have the upper half plane, the lower half plane. And that two different kind of triangle. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, so yeah, um, I think, uh, so like, if you have a Bailey map, mm -hmm. then you like you, this is P1, mm -hmm. and this is 0, 1 is infinity. So I can pull back the triangulation, so I get a triangulation. And the other direction, so basically I can describe two maps, they're not inverses of each other. So mm -hmm. in the other direction, um, so such a triangulation would not just be a triangulation, um, but it would have like the surface uh, would have vertices, like each would be labeled zero, one, and infinity, like so that each triangle has zero, one, and infinity as a vertex. And if you want to make a triangulation into that type of one, you have to subdivide it. Yeah. Okay, let's stop there. Keep on time. Thanks a lot, I guess.